What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Dystopian World Games. My name is Levi Ritt, and I'll be your host for the moment. It's Friday today. I missed my mail call this week. It wasn't too much in the mail anyway, so didn't miss out on much there. But uh, a lot of stuff's in the pipes right now, and I'll try to get you guys caught up to date with that. If you're not following me on social media, you could probably get caught up there. I'm on Facebook, Twitter. I have a Discord. I don't use it too much. Um, my son got sick a few days ago, and it was really bad respiratory bronchiolitis. Uh, three days. Just got out of the hospital today. He's doing a lot better now. Um, thanks, everybody that was on Facebook and followed the situation as it was happening. Thank you guys for your well wishes. I'm so grateful to be part of these communities where we always keep an eye on each other. And uh, next. You might notice that the format's a little different. Right now I got my desk where our table was I have the camera on that wall but we're doing a little bit of moving around remodeling I was able with the help of the MTG community to secure a small three bedroom for my wife and kids so I could try to provide some sort of distance you know separate the business and the family which is what I'm hoping to do here with this place. I'll be looking to turn it into my office and work lab, place where I don't have as many anxieties about bringing out my inventory while I got two, you know, young children. Uh, right here, the point of the video. A couple weeks ago, I'm trying to be more active. <clears throat> in the fraud department on the marketplaces, the MTG, you know, the collector sites. And it was interesting enough when I did that video last week, two weeks ago, um, I stumbled across the post on one of the marketplaces on Facebook and something caught my eye. I'm going to refer to this client by JB. Um, JB had some power pieces in the collection and it was just really a not very decorated post about wanting to sell or trade cards. So upon seeing the power pieces, I was immediately interested because one, we got a fraud problem with a lot of counterfeiting going around. So that was kind of my primary focus. And two, <clears throat> the way it was articulated to me was there was no knowledge of value pertaining to those cards. And it just struck me as odd that somebody active in the magic community wouldn't have knowledge of the cards. I mean, as you can see <clears throat> right here, it's, no protection went into <laughs> making sure these arrived unharmed. But, for the most part, it's alright. I want to open this envelope on camera so I can get a unscripted reaction to what I'm looking at so I can show this client because I had initially made an attempt to pay the postage to have them ship the pieces so I could make an appraisal and then on that I could help this individual find a buyer for them but if they're counterfeit that's kind of a moot point <clears throat> and I just wanted to bring it to the attention of the community that it's picking up again same as it did last year right around the holidays a lot of counterfeiters hit the marketplace and sometimes we're not knowledgeable enough to determine what is authentic and what is not an authentic card. 
So I'm going to open this envelope right here. And <clears throat> the whole cadence was just, it struck me as odd. I don't know. Uh, it's from another state. So, I don't know. Uh, regional customs, regional mannerisms. Uh, it was just a little, struck me weird. We're wrapped up here. And, hey, it's a Dixie paper towel. At least you can't go wrong with that. That's waterproofing. Anywho, let's see what we got here. Because I'm curious. I bet the whole the whole community's curious at this point. You said power pieces. You got power pieces in it. Folded up napkin? Or paper towel? We are going to find out. Oh yeah. No sir. But Yes, they are pretty. What do you have here a black Lewis. I'm not gonna have to be too uh, delicate with this because I, right off the jump, I can acknowledge that this is a fake. And the guy is cradle. You know who I'm looking at. Take care of my baby. Ah, counterfeit. Guy's cradle. Um, yeah, just looking at them, it's, it's glossy surface, original, alpha beta, I mean, a lot, I think everything up through Scourge or wherever it transitioned off into modern, they have a really, uh, a little bit of abrasive surface, I don't know, ruddy, you can tell by looking at an older card it's authenticity because it has no sheen this is just as shiny as grandpa's forehead oh, yeah but uh colorations off I mean, it's a beautiful picture by Christopher Rush rest in peace and you just got to appreciate black lotus but right off the jump i've got another pack i just wanted to see i was going to make a comparison because right here i have a pack of vintage 8 collection from villa zang altars and the proxy company <clears throat> some people go so far as to call them counterfeits but i mean anybody that's knowledgeable about the market knows that these are not authentic because like everything about it is just Lachine the luster there for I was looking for the luster is off like the older vintage cards don't have very shiny luster they're more dull in appearance oh everybody loved that one it's a wheel of fortune I wish I would have picked that one up I mean this whole collection it just came with a bunch of power nine cards and I picked them up just to educate myself in the proxy counterfeit department but I mean you got beta moxin let's see if I can find that black lotus I mean, you got look at that the coloration's almost right almost but everything else about it is I don't believe that the makers of these Proxy counterfeits are actually in an attempting to dupe the marketplace. Oh, where'd the Black Lotus go? Might have it slotted in my 93-94 deck because I wanted a Black Lotus. I ain't spend or I cannot spend the thirteen thousand dollars I need to appropriate a unlimited Black Lotus if that's even where it's at right now. I know. Market's dancing around right now, but anyways, fake card. I don't believe the manufacturers had the intent of duping the secondary market. Hey, we got power nine pieces. No, these are created for the consumer that doesn't have the finance to afford the 
more expensive cards in Magic the Gathering. And there are a lot of expensive cards. I mean, you could look at the duels, the old Arabian's Knights pieces. They're just... Unless you're making a six-figure annual, it's going to be really hard to afford those. Unless you do what I do and sink your entire livelihood into a card game. I do it with the knowledge that I may not be immediately successful. It's like the stock markets or cryptocurrencies. You don't buy into these with the intent on just turning them right over. You buy these kinds of cards with the intent of holding them for a decade or so. And, I mean, if I had a Black Lotus, I'd probably just hang on to it for life. Unless the need, unless something happened to the point where I needed an immediate fund. But, I've been blessed. Most of my financial concerns are relatively low maintenance. I maintain the office here with my labor for the local community. And that's that. Um, I am glad to know that these were fake. It's a funny, weird, funny thing to say. But no, I was concerned about the client at hand either being talked into selling for a very low price and the other concern I had was that this client had counterfeits, was knowledgeable of them, and was trying to make money from the magic community on Facebook. So I'm going to reach out to this client and let them know that they were not authentic cards and hopefully educate them on the hazards. There's a lot of legal stuff that could get worked into it. It's better not to play around. If you have reserve list cards, hold on to them until you find somebody that can appraise them properly. I'm not a professional by any means, but I know magic cards at this point. If I was to be given an authentic alpha, beta, unlimited piece, I would be able to appraise that properly and, you know, probably market it. Maybe I'll get into business like that. I don't know. It's a good business to get into. Commissions are a livelihood sometimes. Anyhow, that's all I really got today. I want to let everybody know that I appreciate you. I love you all. Um, hopefully I'm going to continue to work on this office until I get fine-tuned and I'll have a whole new layout the next time I come on board. I'm working on making some personal decisions for myself and I'm really praying that they work out. I've got some debt to pay back. <clears throat> I've got some debt to acquire. But, in the meantime, I just want to wish everybody a great weekend. And thank you so much for following me and continue to support me as a content creator. I haven't set the Patreon up yet. I don't know if I'm going to. I don't like the idea of... It's just not me. Maybe. Maybe I'll do something like that just to help finance some of these projects I got going on. But... Until I got that figured out, I'm not even going to open the door. <sighs> you guys have a great weekend. And I'm hoping to be back. And this thing will look great. Until then, I'll catch you guys next time. Leave our red, dystopian world games. We're out of here. Peace.